Hey guys, it's me Tyrone here. This is the first time we're actually doing a video like this where I'm actually talking to the camera. Um, it's not going to be all just me talking straight to you guys because I do have a script in front of me and I have not quite yet got the idea of just being able to talk freely to you guys without a script. Plus this has everything I need on it. But look, it's been great. Thank you for the support over the last year, um, especially for the fan scripts and the feedback on it, like the the Jaws ones, the Indiana Jones ones, the Back to the Future ones, of course, the Star Wars ones. That has been probably the most fulfilling thing to do, I guess, over this last year and hearing the positive feedback has been absolutely great from it. Um, like, I've been looking to make videos responding to them, but fortunately, we've got so much positive feedback from them, we haven't had to do a video like that. So today I'm going to be talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi, a Star Wars wish list. This is five points that I have with the Obi-Wan Kenobi Disney Plus series coming up. This is just five things that I want to see out of the show. Now, look, Ewan McGregor is signed up, Hayden Christensen is back, and everyone is super excited about it. And don't get me wrong, I am super excited to see what happens in this show. But today I was going to give a list of five things I do and don't want to see in Kenobi. And before we start, this isn't going to be like a 5,000 Clone Wars characters that should be involved in the Clone Wars. There will be a couple of name drops throughout this video, but for me, it's more of how they craft the story, and I'll get to how they handle, I guess, Clone Wars characters and referencing that later on in the video. Number one, break his faith. So first off, I want to see Obi-Wan get broken down. I want the weight of his own failure in Anakin to really come down on him. Seeing breaking and rocking his faith, like at the end of Revenge of the Sith, Yoda and Obi-Wan react as if Order 66 was like a minor inconvenience to them. They're still having fun and discussing, oh, Qui-Gon's going to be around. Like, your religion just got wiped out in two minutes and you're just acting as if nothing's happened, as if the breeze has changed slightly. I want to see some things. I want to see tears and I want to see Obi-Wan tiptoe and giving up the Force, like Luke in The Last Jedi, exploring more with his solitude. Rebels gave us a great glimpse into this, but at this time we'd seen him fully accept his situation. I love Obi-Wan as a character, he's great, but for me, my biggest flaw personally with the character is his lack of flaws. Luke was always intriguing because he would make those sort of snap impulse decisions, he would defy orders, he would get his ass kicked. The show here needs to explore Obi-Wan at his most vulnerable. I want to see his faith shaken and how he responds to it to turn into the wise wizard from A New Hope. Number two, flashbacks are fine. So Hayden Christensen is back, and I'm completely fine with having flashbacks to the prequels or recreating Clone Wars scenes, but these should all be done in a way to break away at Obi-Wan's characters. Show him remembering Anakin in a way to further build on their relationship. Because, to me, a big problem with the prequels is if you look at their relationship and the way they talk about it in A New Hope, there's no way that Obi-Wan would talk about Anakin with such... I guess, nostalgia and sentiment as he does. I think the problem starts in The Phantom Menace, whereas it's Qui-Gon, the wise Jedi, who is pushing for this against the wills of everyone. It should have been Obi-Wan and this inexperienced, naive Jedi trying to push and helping this kid, or I guess his friend. Obi-Wan should be pushing for Anakin because he feels such sympathy as he sees his situation where he is a slave. And then they could have built it off as Obi-Wan being an immature father figure, I guess. However, what we got was what we got. And then they just constantly bicker in episode 2. Anakin talks about Obi-Wan behind his back. And then episode 3, they spend the first 20 minutes and it's kind of fun. They're having good banter. And then around the 50 minute mark of the movie, they split up for an hour. And then they don't come back together until the final act of the film where Obi-Wan only sees the product of Anakin's turn. He doesn't actually experience any of it by himself. So basically an example of what I want to see is a scene where Anakin's trying to come to Obi-Wan and say, basically saying, look, there's no one else I can trust. I can't trust Yoda. I can't trust Windu. I can't trust Kit Fisto with this sort of personal quandary I'm in. And I need you as basically my father figure to try and help me with this. My girlfriend is pregnant, and I'm feeling that she's going to die in childbirth. 
and you see that Obi-Wan's still trying to remove those personal attachments because of his own attachment to staying in line with the Jedi Order. And that emotional divide between him and Anakin is part of what pushes him over the line and is part of the guilt that weighs down so heavily on Obi-Wan. However, speaking of Anakin, number three, Vader and Kenobi must not meet. So this is a biggie. Whether or not this happens is kind of a deal breaker for me in this show. At no point in the entire show should Vader and Kenobi meet on screen. Not in person, not in a discussion, not in a fight, nothing. If they want to do a sequel trilogy astral plane thing, then fine, cool. But ultimately, any meeting between the two will take away from the episode four duel. And this line of... The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. It won't make any damn sense because Vader would never refer to Vader as the learner. And with Vader, this also leans into... Number four, don't lean too heavily into things we know. So Rogue One made this mistake of thinking that just shoving Star Wars stuff on the screen makes Star Wars instead of building likable and fun main characters. But this show is going to have the very thin ice of fan service that it's set on Tatooine. Like I've already talked about how I was a little disappointed in how much fan service was in The Mandalorian Season 2 and, and how what was once such a special standalone show all of a sudden became this show that relied on everyone having seen The Clone Wars. So, Kenobi should make sure we don't see too much stuff we know. There are some givens. There are Sandcrawlers, Jawas, Stormtroopers, the Homestead, Luke, Uncle Owen, and Aunt Beru, but the show needs to make sure it stands on its own as much as possible. Like, I'm scared for that scene where he goes to the canteen, or that scene where he bumps into a Wookiee, or he looks up at the skies and sees the Falcon, or goes to Jabba's palace, which is very likely of happening in the show. But truth is, none of that should happen. Number five, make it a drama. The final point is that this show should be focused solely on building the character of Obi-Wan and watch him struggle through these mill years of his solitude. Showing a man struggle with the failures of his past and how his guilt of Order 66 and failing Anakin almost leads to him abandoning his religion, just like Luke did in The Last Jedi. In my ideal world though, the show would just be him going about his life. Once a week he would go to the market and he'd walk by the homestead to check on Luke from afar. But if my worst fears are realized, then he'll be on a spaceship to Corellia or some crap by the end of the first episode. But that's my very quickly drawn up list of five things that I think should happen or should not happen in the Kenobi show. Now, look, I know these are quite broad things and I'm sure people want flashbacks of, say, Satine or maybe have him communicate with Yoda or see him communicating with Qui-Gon. And... Those are all things that I do think should genuinely happen in the show, but as I said before, I'm not concerned with fan service. You create this show and you make it good to start off with and you challenge the character and you break him down first, and then you can have fan service as a way of topping it all off. But the main point of this is just that his failure has to weigh down on him and seeing how he overcomes it to become the wise old man from the start of A New Hope. So guys, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you wanted to see in the Kenobi show. Thank you, and bye.